Well, for more on the turmoil in Burkina Faso, I spoke a brief time ago to Peter Pham, the Africa director at the Atlantic Council. Revolution or a blow for democracy? Just how significant is this? Well, it's going to take some time before we do find out what is really happening here. Yes, President Blaise Compaoré, who's been in power for 27 years, has resigned. But then the General uh, Traoré, who has announced himself as president, the Constitution actually provides that if the president were to resign, the president of the National Assembly, a quiet administrator by the uh, uh, name of Watara, uh, uh, Apollinaire Watara, should take over. But he has apparently been arrested or at least put on, under house arrest. So th the Constitution is not being followed. Then there are two other military men who in recent hours have declared themselves the leader. So there is a serious risk of a power vacuum in a state that's pivotal to an entire security system for given what's going on in Mali with Islamist activity, the situation in Niger because of the meltdown in Libya and the ongoing problems in Nigeria with Boko Haram. So how hopeful are you then that the situation can be resolved quickly and peacefully? Well, I was much more hopeful yesterday when, at the end of the day, when then-President Compare announced that he would not seek another term and that he would respect the Constitution and call for an inclusive government of national unity. It was a move that was heralded by the international community, the United States, and other countries favored it. But that wasn't enough. It wasn't, it was perhaps too late for the crowds and the mobs. And as a result, we, instead of a transition, the first ever of peacefully from one leader to another, we have this vacuum, and that's very worrisome. A lot of people will look at Burkina Faso and think, well, this was a relatively stable country. Why has this happened now? Well, Burkina Faso has transformed tremendously in the quarter of a century that the ousted president was in power. It went from a very rural society. Ouagadougou is today the fastest urbanizing center in Africa itself. So to a very urban society, lack of more. This is a landlocked country with very few natural resources. There's some mining going on, but it still requires a great deal. And so there's an expectation today with communications. Young people want more things. Change is happening. There's been a tremendous amount of progress. One has to acknowledge, especially in the last decade, the number of schools in the country have quadrupled. Women have acquired new freedoms and greater equality in the country. But, uh, you know, it wasn't happening fast enough. But very quickly, is this going to impact aid and investment, very briefly? Well, it depends on how the international community chooses to interpret this takeover by whichever military leader ends up on top. It's clearly not in the Constitution, but if it's declared officially a coup, there could be a cutoff of all but humanitarian assistance. Peter Pham, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you.